the next topic that we would discuss is uh, engine performance okay so we are going to look at how to quantify the performance of an ic engine what parameters can uh, be used to evaluate the uh, performance characteristics so uh, as we already discussed we can uh, view an ic engine as an open system to which we provide fuel and air right we get we remove exhaust gases from the engine okay so this is the engine and we get some work output of course there is some heat loss from the engine okay so if i draw the system boundary around an engine so we can immediately see that uh, the engine is an open system right so there is both mass and uh, energy transfer across the system uh, boundary okay so that's that's the way in which we are going to visualize the engine now uh, if i if we were to look at what are all the different uh, energy terms that we would encounter and how these can be used to quantify engine performance so let's look at what are the different uh, energy terms which are significant you know to analyze uh, engine performance so i'm just drawing a very simple line diagram to just uh, indicate the uh, cylinder piston and the crankshaft okay so just a simple line diagram to indicate now all of us know that there is some energy input from the fuel okay let me call it as some quantity a so i receive some a joules from the fuel by uh, combusting it all right so there is some chemical energy which is stored in the fuel okay so we'll shortly see that we are going to define a parameter called calorific value of a fuel which will tell me how much energy content that fuel has and which can be used in this engine okay so i get uh, that and when we combust this fuel of course there are going to be some energy losses what are the main energy losses even if we have perfect combustion and let's say you know like uh, the all the chemical energy in the fuel is converted to heat energy still in an internal combustion engine we are going to have heat energy lost due to exhaust gases right because i even the exhaust gases that come from the engine are hot right so some thermal energy is uh, wasted or given out by the exhaust through the exhaust gases we also have some uh, heat energy uh, escaping uh, or being taken out of the engine through the coolant as we have seen you know there are uh, paths or jackets for the coolant in the cylinder head in the cylinder body and so on right so through which we absorb uh, heat energy from the engine components right to maintain the temperature of the engine components right so there is some heat energy which is removed from the components of the engine by the coolant and still the engine is going to radiate some energy because as we will see you know like uh, even when we stop a car right and we go near the hood of a car we'll see that it's radiating heat right so it's, the engine gets hot okay so and then the, we are going to lose some thermal energy due to radiation so let's say we lump all these energy losses and we call it as some quantity b okay the quantity a minus b 
is what is available to push the piston, acts on the piston and essentially results in kinetic energy of the piston. Okay. So, this energy is what is called as a indicated energy. So, you subtract the quantity B from the quantity A. So, what is left behind is, a, is the energy which can be used to push the piston. Right? So, that is termed as the indicated energy. Now, we are going to have other losses. So, let us let, let's discuss what other energy losses can happen. So, let me write down another set of energy losses. So, as we already realized you know the, the piston moves within the cylinder and there is going to be some friction right. Although we lubricate the compression rings, the oil rings contact the cylinder surface right and there is going to be some friction and there is going to be some friction in the bearings right and the connection between the connecting rod piston right and the uh, <coughs> connecting rod and the crankshaft at the uh, what to say journals and so on right the crank pins journals and so on right. So, there are going to be losses due to friction at those locations. So, there is frictional losses right we have already look at, looked at what is called as pumping losses right what is pumping loss you recall that uh, negative energy in the PV diagram right which is uh, required to take in the uh, air fuel mixture or air during the suction stroke and then push out the exhaust gases during the exhaust stroke right. So, the energy for the for those strokes also need to come from the engine right. So, that is that is a pumping loss right and the engine also drives other devices. So, for example, the engine crankshaft will drive the coolant pump right. So, because the coolant needs to be circulated. The engine uh, crankshaft will also drive the lubrication oil pump right. The engine crankshaft will also drive the camshaft and the valve assembly right. So, there are lot of components which will be powered by the engine. So, you, you have to take into account other devices okay, which are powered by the engine. So, all these losses let us say we call it as we lump and call it as some quantity C. Okay. So, this quantity which is lost is essentially lumped you know, although it is a combination of various components we use typically lump them and call them as friction energy okay although it's it has multiple components okay just for the sake of uh, naming it we call it as friction energy and there's something called friction power okay we are going to come there shortly okay so the net output which is the useful work which comes out of the engine is called as brake energy. So, this is the uh, useful energy output okay. that is you take the quantity A which is available from the fuel subtract B which, which includes all these losses the first set of losses then you subtract <coughs> C which includes the second set of energy losses whatever is remaining is the useful work which is coming out of the engine okay. and this is called as the brake energy so the brake energy indicates the uh, net useful energy that comes out of the engine and that can be used to drive the vehicle okay so this is what is transmitted onwards to the uh, what is called as a drive line okay which we will study uh, next Okay, the clutch gear box final drive and finally to the wheels and then the uh, traction forces for propelling the vehicle are generated. Okay. So, the brake energy is the 
net energy useful energy that comes out of the engine. So, we are going to define some uh, terms. and uh, then uh, use them in our analysis of engine performance. So, the first term is what is called as indicated power. What is indicated power? It is indicative of the energy from the fuel that can be converted into work on the piston. Okay. So, that is the indicated power. Okay. So, we, we label something as indicated energy right the quantity a minus b the power corresponding to that quantity is what is called as indicated power the next one is friction power so it is corresponding to that uh, energy loss c right so the friction power is indicative of the energy <coughs> lost due to bearing friction pumping loss energy spent to drive other devices including wall mechanisms okay etc okay so that is friction power so this is that energy loss uh, c sorry uh, yes that the corresponding power term is what is called as friction power then the third uh, power out power term which is typically used in engine performance analysis is what is called as brake power okay abbreviated as bp so, this is indicative of the energy obtained from the engine that can be used to drive the vehicle. So, that is brake power. So, obviously, the indicated power is equal to the friction power plus brake power, right. So, that is something which we can immediately realize. So, the energy output that ultimately comes out of the engine, right, is the brake power, right. So, and that is what we are interested in, right, because that is what we can transmit further on and then used to uh, can be used to. Uh, drive the vehicle. Okay. So, these uh, ter uh, power terms are used to define the corresponding efficiency terms. So, what are the corresponding efficiency terms? There is something called as the indicated thermal <coughs> efficiency. So, that is eta i t h, i stands for indicator, t h stands for thermal efficiency. It is the power output divided by energy input, right. So, that is the general definition of efficiency, okay. So, here the power output that we are talking about is the indicated power i p. And what is the rate at which energy is given? It is nothing but the mass flow rate of fuel multiplied by the calorific value of fuel because even in the denominator we should have a 
rate quantity right energy rate quantity because power is the unit of power will be in watts right. So, I also need a quantity which has the same unit in the denominator. So, we have to give the rate at which we are supplying energy to the engine that is essentially the mass flow rate of fuel okay which will be in kilograms per second times the calorific value which will be in typically written in joules per kilogram. So, we will get joules per second and the unit will be in watts okay. So, that we get a non dimensional term for efficiency okay. So, that is how we define indicated thermal <coughs> efficiency. So, there is another efficiency term which is called as the brake thermal efficiency. So, which is eta B T H of course, now it is pretty straightforward it is going to be the ratio of the brake power divided by the mass flow rate of fuel times the calorific value of the fuel right. So, that is the brake thermal efficiency. So, another efficiency term is what is called as the mechanical efficiency. The term mechanical efficiency is nothing but the ratio of brake power and indicated power right. So, it is indicator of uh, how much energy am I losing you know like due to that quantity C right which we are quantifying as uh, friction power. So, this is going to be uh, brake power divided by uh, brake power plus friction power right. So, that is uh, brake thermal efficient sorry mechanical efficiency okay and then we have what is called as uh, relative efficiency which is nothing but the actual thermal efficiency of the engine divided by the corresponding air standard thermal efficiency. Okay. So, suppose if I say the actual uh, you know like the thermal uh, brake thermal efficiency of a petrol engine let us say it is 28 percent right and the corresponding air standard thermal efficiency by considering the auto cycle is 56 percent. So, the relative efficiency will be 28 by 56 which is 0.5 or 50 percent okay. So, that is how we should look at the relative efficiency. So, this gives us a feel of uh, by what factor should I multiply the efficiency of the air standard cycle to get the actual engine efficiency okay. So, that is what is called as relative efficiency. So, I, I will stop here and then like uh, in the next class we will look at uh, a few more energy uh, performance parameters uh, before we uh, continue further into engine <coughs> analysis okay. Thank you.